you need to open your vocabulary notebook to the R National Parks vocabulary list. Yep, that's it. And then we are adding, so draw a line underneath the word wildlife. I think that was the last one. Yes. Which was number five. Write today's date, September 9th, 2020. And we're gonna start with number six. So you should have a six to the left of the pink line. And then you'll start your word to the right of the pink line. There are five words. So Aaron, you'll do numbers six, seven, and eight. Cullen, you'll do nine and 10. Remind me to give you note cards before the end of the day. And you'll take your vocabulary notebook and your pencil bag with your flare in at home, unless you have a flare at home. Okay, so number six, Aaron, this is yours. Put a little star next to it. The word is ecosystem. Remember, if you cannot read a word and you cannot figure it out by using context clues, raise your hand and ask me. Please make sure the only hands that are raised during this vocabulary time are either emergencies or asking me how to spell a word that's on the board. Ecosystem is E-C-O-S-Y-S-T-E-M. Ecosystem. It is a noun. In this case, it is a thing. And it is a community of living things in a particular place. So number six is ecosystem, E-C-O-S-Y-S-T-E-M. It is a noun, in this case, a thing. And it is a community of living things in a particular place. So that means if you go to the bottom of the ocean, the ecosystem are the living things at the bottom of the ocean, in that place. Now living things, does that mean just animals? What else does it include, Carla? It includes us. Do we live at the bottom of the, well, it, it, we're animals. We're technically animals. What else does it include? Zari? Plants. Plants. What else? Animals, plants. Kingston? Think of those kingdoms. Animals, plants, Cullen? Oh. Bacteria, protists, Zadie, do you remember the last one? Fungi. Fungi, good. And then there's two groups of bacteria, ancient bacteria and bacteria, but we kind of combine them in our, when we're talking about them into bacteria. Good. Number seven. Erin, this is yours too. Put a little star next to it. It is the word restore. Restore, R-E-S-T-O-R-E, -E. restore. It is a verb. Remember a verb is a word that says an action or that says what something is. And it means to fix or bring back. Restore, R-E-S-T-O-R-E, -E, is a verb, and it means to fix or bring back. So if I restore an old car, it means I'm fixing it so that I can bring it back to its former looks. Restore. Number eight. Erin, this is your last one, so put a little star next to it. It is the word raise. 
G R A Z E. Graze. It is another verb. And it means to feed on plants. throughout the day. So graze, G-R-A-Z-E, it is a verb. That means to feed on plants throughout the day. So if you're driving and you see a farm and there's a bunch of cows out there eating grass, they are grazing. They are feeding on plants, grass, throughout the day. Okay, number nine, Cullen, this is yours, so go ahead and put a star next to it. Um, Aaron, don't worry about, I mean, still write them, but don't worry about doing cards for number nine, nine and ten, so you don't have to do any more stars. Number nine is the word flourish. Flourish. F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H. Make sure you have that O-U, not F-L-U-R, because that's what it sounds like, but that's not how it's spelled. F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H. It is another verb. And it means to do well or live and grow. So if you uh, so flourish, F L O U R I S H, it is a verb. It means to do well or to live and grow. That means this first part of the definition to do well. If you flourish in math class, that means you're doing well. The second part, if you have a plant, and you are watering it and giving it sunlight and everything it needs and it lives and grows big and tall, then it has flourished. So you can flourish in math class, which means you did well, or a plant or animal or protist or fungi or bacteria can also flourish, which means it's living and growing. Okay, last word. It's actually a term. It's two words put together for one term. So, Cullen, this is yours. Put a star next to number 10. It is the word or term prayed upon. It's two words. P-R-E-Y-E-D space U-P-O-N. So it is a term rather than a word, because it's two words, so we'll say vocabulary term. Prayed upon. It is another verb. Mm -hmm. And it means hunted and eaten. Preyed upon, P R E, I'm sorry, P R E Y E D, space, U P O N, is a verb, and it means hunted and eaten. So if the cheetah preyed upon the, what is Timon? Meerkat. If the cheetah preyed upon the meerkat, that means the meerkat was hunted and eaten. Okay, when you're done writing that, you can go ahead and put your vocabulary notebook away. Aaron and Cullen, don't forget. Um, remind me to give you your cards. Actually, I'll give them to you right now. Go ahead and open your textbook to page 74. Please make sure that there are 10 kids in the class today, not three. 
by myself. Yes. If you are coming, you need to stop. Okay, so you should be open at page 74. You should have your um, main idea chart out, ready to follow along. Please make sure that you, oh yes, uh, face shield on quickly. I will just make sure that the first person already has theirs on. And go ahead and tell us the genre, Kingston, loud and slow. What is the genre of this passage that we are about to read? A non-fiction article tells about a person's place or event. Tells not just about, but tells facts. facts about a person, place, or event. So today's today's story is a non-fiction article. Remember, non-fiction means it's real, it is not made up. It's an article, so that means it's telling us facts about a person, place, or event. What reading skill are we going to work on in this story, Kingston? Loud and slow. A little louder. So we're talking about main idea and details. Main idea of an article is what it's mostly about. Details give more information about the main idea. Can your main idea be a supporting detail? No. Your main idea is just a summary of what a certain piece of, inf of, certain piece of a passage is about. The supporting details are the actual sentences from that paragraph or article or whatever it is that tell that this main idea is true. So main ideas cannot be supporting details. Okay, Kingston, please read the title and that question underneath, loud and slow. Not nation, what is that word? One national party. Louder, please. How did the return how did the return of elk to one national party and gray wolves to another affect the ecosystem of those parts? Good. So this article is going to answer that question. How did the return of elk to one national park and gray wolves to another affect the ecosystems of those parks? So we're gonna find that out in this article. Okay, thank you Kingston. Go ahead and read next. Carla, loud and slow. Make sure, Carla, make sure that you are reading every single word. Use your finger to follow along. And don't read that word until you are pointing to it. Today, park ranger. We already read, we have not, you're, you skipped a whole paragraph, Carla. You've got to be paying attention. Nation park protect. Not nation, park. national parks. National parks protect wildlife, history, and conclusions. Not conclusions, Carla, you're going too fast. Carla, look, this is what you did. You looked at this word, you read the first little bit, and then you guessed what the rest of the word was. That's something that we do when we're new readers, which you guys are new readers. But as you become a better reader, you can't do that. You can't look at the very beginning and then guess what the rest of the word says. You have to read the whole word. So Carla, let's cover up the end and we have C-U-L-T. You can do it in your book. 
What word do we have? C-U-L-T. You can do it in your book. Cover up U-R-E in that word. That very last word on the first sentence. And what do you have? How would you say that? Good. Colt. Good. Now, U-R-E sounds like your. Colt, your. What word does that sound like that we know? Cultier. Well, we don't, there's not a word that's cultier, but there's a word that sounds kind of like it. Michaela, you think you know? Culture. Culture. Good. So what is this word, Carla? Culture. Culture. So sometimes when we chunk, we don't get the exact sound of the word. But once we chunk, we get really close and we're like, well, culture isn't a word, but culture sounds like it and it's a word. So it must be culture. Okay, keep going, Carla. Use your finger. Still, hundreds of plants and animals disappear from our nation parks. National parks, Carla. National parks. That's because our, their environment has changed, mostly because of human activities. Good. So that means, that's the very first paragraph of this article. So that paragraph kind of tells us the main idea of this whole article. Because if you're looking at the main idea, one big piece of writing, you're going to look at the first paragraph instead of the first sentence to give you an idea of what the main idea is. So based on that paragraph, what do you think the main idea of this article is going to be? Based on the paragraph that Carla just read, what do you think the main idea of this article is going to be? Zadie? The wildlife of the National Park. Not quite, because that would just mean that all we're doing is giving facts about it the whole time. But does that, is that, does that sound like what this is going to be? That we're just going to hear facts about all kinds of wildlife in national parks? What does this paragraph make it sound like this article is probably going to be about? Make sure that you're focusing. The answer's not here. Zari? I think it's about, like, like how the, like. You've got it. Take a breath. Like how the um, animals and have, how they are disappearing from the park, the next. Because of why? Because of their environment. Because of the environment? Just the environment? What happened to the environment? Sorry. Because of um, their wild the, um, history and the Okay, culture. now you're just guessing. Now you're just guessing. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm not sure why. Um, Aaron. Loud. It's because So this article is probably going to be about what? Put all that information together. What is the main idea of this article probably going to be? Based on what Aaron and Zari just said. Come on, guys. Think. Aaron and Zari just told you the answer. You just have to put it together into one answer. Two separate people just gave two separate answers. When you put those two separate answers together, you get the main idea of this whole article. Kingston, loud. It's about how, how we are looting their environment. The animals are environment. So that what happened? They, they move away from the environment. So good, Kingston. The main idea of this article is probably going to be how humans have changed animals' environments. Do you see how Kingston and I, with Zari and Aaron's help, came up with that main idea based on that one paragraph? We have the animals have disappeared, and we have the environment has changed. So, now, keep reading me. Today, park 
rangers work to restore the balance of each park ecosystem. They are bringing plants and animals back into their natural environments. So far, the programs are working, especially for elk and woods. I'm sorry, wolves. That was me not reading the word correctly. So, now that brings us the second part of this main idea. Not only are we gonna learn about how humans have affected the environment negatively, but also how they have affected the environment to bring back these animals. Okay, well, let's move to page 75 and I'll read the first paragraph. Follow along with me. Use your finger if you need to so that you don't lose your place. Long journey home. It was a cold morning in January when 28 elk had finally completed a long journey. They had traveled 2,500 miles by truck from Elk Island National Park in Canada to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in North Carolina. They were the first of 52 elk to be reintroduced into the park. So there's the first step they took in trying to bring the environment back so that these animals can live. Victoria, please put your book on your desk. Okay, read next. Cullen, loud and slow. Read that next block of text, that next paragraph. 10 million. A little elk. louder, a little slower. 10 million elk. Once rammed, not ramp. Remember, O A sounds like O. Roamed all over North America. Now they are all. Not they. Now. Now they're all only about one million. So that's ten million to one million. That's nine million elk that have disappeared. One. Elk disappeared from North Carolina more than 150 years ago. That means they used to live in North Carolina, but over 150 years ago, they all died out. They didn't just leave. They died and no more were born. Keep going. Many were killed by hunters. Others died as people built farms, towns, and roads, or elks used, used to get graze. Good. So that's how, how did people make elk disappear? How did people make elk disappear? Ethan Loud. By building things. How did building things make the elk disappear? When they built things, what happened? Why did the elk disappear? Elk disappear? They destroyed where the land where they lived. Good. Elks typically live um, in the woods or near woods. Well, if you keep building houses, can you fit trees and houses? Can you fit a lot of trees and houses? No. So that meant once they kept building things, those forests and those lands where the elks lived were no longer available. What else did humans do to make elks disappear? Carla? Hunters killed some elks. The hunters killed them. They overhunted. Now a little bit of hunting is not necessarily a bad thing, but if you overdo it, well then there's none left. Sometimes we need a little bit but if you overdo it, there's none left. Okay, um, go ahead and read that next paragraph loud and slow, Colin. Elves munch on trees and bushes. A little slow. Allowing more sunlight into the park so ground levels plants grow. Smaller animals like chickamauks, 
can then flourish. Good. What is it? Flourish. Flourish. That's one of our vocabulary words. Chickmunks are food for large animals like wolves. Without the elves, the park parks exo, ecosystems don't that don't but didn't function as well. We are trying to restore the ecosystem to what it was two hundred years ago, said Lawrence Hartman of the National Park Service. So we accident we accidentally skipped a paragraph that I wanted to go back and do the main idea, but we'll go back to that at the end if we have time. But let's look at that paragraph that Cullen just read. What is the main idea of that last paragraph, that last block of text on page 75? Is it elk munch on trees and bushes? Is this all about, is every single sentence about an elk eating a tree in a bush? Ethan? No. no. What is the main idea of this paragraph? Michaela? Left. That's not the main idea because is everything in this about people coming in and restoring the ecosystem? Who is doing all the action in this sentence? Who or what is doing all of the work in this sentence? Victoria? What animal in particular? Elk. So we already know our main idea is going to be about elk. But can we just say elk and that's our main idea? No. What is this paragraph trying to say about elk? Don't tell me what the elk are doing because they do something different each time. But what is this paragraph trying to say about elk? Sorry? How they've been like dying out? Is this paragraph about them dying out? Just the one Colin just read. That very last block of text. Does it say anything about the elk dying? No, it's talking about how the elk's much um, is every single sentence about them eating a tree or a branch? No. So that's not the main idea. What is this paragraph? This is something we have to draw conclusions. We may not be able to use a sentence directly from the book. So we have to combine the information from the book into a main idea that tells us what this paragraph is trying to say about elk. Victoria. Okay, why is that important? Why is it telling us that, Aaron? Because it says, loudly. Because it says without the elk, the park system didn't function. Okay. Good. So that means elk are necessary to. The park's ecosystem. Now we're not going to say without elk, without the elk, the park's ecosystem didn't function as well. Because did the paragraph tell us what, how it didn't function as well? Did it say things died out, things couldn't get food, whatever? Did it say that? Did it say those words exactly? No. So it's not. We're not going to say that the main idea is that the park did not function without elk because this paragraph didn't tell us how it didn't function. It just said it didn't function as well. But it is telling us how elk are necessary to the park's ecosystem. 
What is one supporting detail from that sentence, now, uh, from that paragraph? Now, supporting details can pretty much always be straight from the text. So what is one supporting detail from that paragraph that starts elk munch, munch, on, elk munch on trees and branches that supports this main idea that elk are necessary to the park's ecosystem? Remember, there's not only like three of you in this classroom. There are 11 or 10. Aaron? Good. Now I'm going to shorten that a little because it's a lot to write. Elk eat taller plants. I have a comma because I have a conjunction. We didn't learn about so, but so is a conjunction. So I have a comma and a conjunction, which means I'm going to have another independent clause. So sunlight can get to small plants. So elk eat the taller plants, like trees and bushes, so that sunlight can get to small plants. Well, why is that important? That leads us to our second supporting detail, which is what? It is important for the sunlight to get to the small plants because why? What is our next supporting detail? Now make sure, everybody listen, because some of you, I think, are raising your hand and you're going to tell me something completely different than what needs to come next. Why is it important for the sunlight to get to the small plants? What is our next supporting detail answers that question. Smith. Smaller animals like chipmunks can then flourish. Good. So we're going to summarize that sentence. And we're going to say chipmunks eat the small plants and flourish. So they do well, they live and grow. Chipmunks eat the small plants and flourish. Notice I do not have a comma before and, because is there a subject and a predicate after and? Yeah. Maybe? No. no, just the predicate, because we don't have a compound sentence, we have a compound predicate. They eat the small plants and they flourish. Now our last supporting detail, why is that important? Why is it important for the chipmunks to flourish? That leads us to our last supporting detail. Colin? Chipmunks are food for large animals like wolves. So, wolves eat the chipmunks. which allows them to do what? Colin? It's, our, it's, our, it's not in the book. But because they're able to eat the chipmunks, they can? They can, um. Who knows? It's one of our vocabulary words. Because they're able to eat the chipmunks, and there's lots of them, they are able to? Victoria? Flourish. So because of elks, the small plants flourish. Because the small plants flourish, chipmunks eat them and flourish. Because the chipmunks flourish, wolves eat the chipmunks and flourish. So just because of elk eating those tall plants, the rest of these things are able to happen. If elk die out, that means the tall plants take over. Do the small plants grow if sunlight can't get through the tall plants? Class? No. No, if there's no small plants, do chipmunks have something to eat? No. no, so they die. If there's no small animals to eat, do the bigger animals 
have animals to eat, class? No. So do they flourish? No. No. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and turn the page. So because of elk, all of this is able to happen. Turn the page and keep reading. Zadie, loud and slow. studying the elk's progress. Jennifer Mar Morrow is leading the, with the research. She tracks the elk using special radio collars that are placed around the elk's neck. The collar sends signals that show re researchers where the elk are and how they're doing. Keep going. Researchers also keep track of the number of elk calves that are born each year. In the first year, 11 calves were born in the park. Eight survived, but some, but some were preyed upon by bears. It's all part of the natural balance, and that's exactly what wildlife researchers like to see. So yes, it's sad that the chipmunks get eaten. It's sad that some of the baby elk were eaten, but if that didn't happen, well then these larger animals would not flourish and then we would not have them. So yes, it's sad that the chipmunks get eaten. It's sad that the baby elk get eaten, but as long as it's not happening with everything because they're out of other food sources, it's okay. It balances out. We don't have too many elk, which means we would have no trees or bushes, which we do need some trees or bushes. So if we had too much elk because the wolves were not eating them, well then we would have other problems. So that's why if we had too many chipmunks and they ate all the small plants, well there would there be small plants for any other animals? No. No. So that's why we need that balance. Okay, we don't have much time, so we just need to go ahead and um, keep reading. Read about the Yellowstone food chain, Smith. Loud and slow. Yellowstone food chain. The disappearance of wolves left a big hole in Yellowstone's ecosystem. So now we're changing, we're switching gears. We were talking about elk in Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Now we're talking about wolves in Yellowstone. Keep going. Coyotes and elk, which are hunted by wolves, became to too numerous. Plants began to disappear because the elk population had grown so large. Foxes, which eat the same rodents as coyotes, were starving because the coyotes were watching most of the prey. The ecosystem, the ecosystem of the park was badly out of balance. So, the pause. so we just read uh, Zadie just read about how these sad things do happen, like the baby elk being eaten, but it's necessary to keep the park balanced. Well, Smith just read to us about what happens when it's not balanced. So what is the main idea of the paragraph that Smith just read? Look at it. Think about it. What is the main idea of that paragraph? Colin? The disappearance of wolves left a big hole in Yellowstone ecosystem. So, let's use that new word, what we're talking about. We're talking about the balance. Yellowstone's ecosystem was it balanced or unbalanced? Is this paragraph talking about how it was balanced or how it was unbalanced, Zari? Balanced. Is this paragraph talking about how it was balanced, everything was right, everything was equal? No. So what was it, Zari? How they were unbalanced. Unbalanced because of what? 
what caused Yellowstone's ecosystem to be unbalanced? Carla? The wolves have left. The wolves were gone. So Yellowstone's ecosystem was unbalanced without wolves. Oops, I accidentally left out a word. It should have was. We still have 10 minutes, so we're good. So Yellowstone's ecosystem was unbalanced without wolves. Give me one supporting detail. What was the first problem that we read that the lack of wolves caused? What was the very first thing that the lack of wolves caused at Yellowstone? Aaron? Because of why? Wolves weren't there to eat elk and coyotes. So the first problem, the first supporting detail, the first thing that led to the park being unbalanced. Wolves weren't there to eat elk and coyote. Because of that, what was happening? Because the wolves weren't there to eat the elk and coyote, what happened? Colin? Foxes which eat the same products as coyotes were starving because the coyotes were catching most of the prey. So there were too many what? There are too many coyotes. There were too many coyotes and what were they doing? Catching all the prey. Eating all the small animals which meant what happened? The foxes were um, dying because there were no food. Comma. So the foxes were starving. Good. And our last supporting detail for that paragraph. Well, that's what happened because there were two, the wolves weren't there to eat the coyotes. Well, what happened because the wolves weren't there to eat the elk? What happened because the wolves weren't there to eat the elk? Zadie? There were too many elk. So what happened? Because there were too many elk, what happened? The answer's in the book. So that's the first part. There were too many elk. So what happened? Oh, plants began, began to disappear because... Comma, so plants disappeared. Oops, I spelled disappeared wrong. There's a little A there. So, Yellowstone's ecosystem was unbalanced without wolves. We know that because wolves weren't there to eat the elk and coyotes. So there became, there were too many coyotes who ate all the small animals, so foxes were starving. And there were too many elk, so they ate all the plants, and plants were disappearing. Smith, go ahead and read that last little bit. The government wanted to fix the park's ecosystem. They decided to bring back the wolves. The goal was to put na nature back into balance. Now, Yellowstone is howling with life once again, and nature is taking its course. Good. 
So we see this pyramid at the top. That says the Yellowstone food chain. At the top of the food chain is the wolf. Now there are the right amount of wolves. So they eat some of the elk and moose and coyotes, but do they eat all of them? Zadie? No. No. There's not too many wolves, so they're not eating too many of those elk, coyote, and moose, but they're eating enough so that these things aren't happening. Well then, there are enough, not too many, not too little, elk, coyote, and moose. So then they eat some of the plant species, so we don't have this problem where none of the small plants can get light. They eat the small animals, so that we don't have this problem where the chipmunks eat all the plants. And they eat the smaller predators, so that there aren't too many. So because we have the gray wolf back, we don't have too many or too few of any of the animals or living things underneath. So does everybody understand why one thing can throw a whole park out of balance? Yes. Okay, thank you, Smith. Go ahead, let's see, everybody's going back in. And read the last section, Aaron. Loud and slow, this is it. Um, we're not going to be able to go to the one I missed because we don't have time, but we can go ahead and finish this story. Howling back to life. Loud and slow. For centuries, packs of wolves lived in the West. When settlers came in the 18... We're talking about years, so we wouldn't say 1,800s. We would say the 18... Hundreds. Nope, not 1880s, because then there would have to be 1880. But since there's 1800, it's 1800s. If we're talking about years, we would not read out the whole year like we would a number. We would say 1800s. When settlers came back in the 1800s, they hunted these wild animals. By the 1970s, which led to this problem. Sorry. They had also become endangered in much of the United States. In the 19, in 1995, 31 gray wolves were released into the park. Now more than a decade later, there are more than five times as many wolves from the gray wolves. Good. So what Aaron just read told us how this happened. Well, hunters came, or settlers came in the 1800s and did the same thing that settlers did to elk at, Rocky, at uh, Smoky Mountain National Park. They hunted them, they overbuilt so they didn't have the land, and then they were gone. So then that led to this. Okay, very good. Go ahead and put everything away. These go in, we are done with them. If we have time tomorrow, we'll come back to it, but we probably won't. So this goes in the reading side of your reading and religion folder. So get out your reading and religion folder and put this on the reading side. Not the religion side, the reading side. Then put your, voc uh, then put your reading textbook away. Stand up and push your chair in.